Hi, my name is Russell Rosak. I'm a psychiatrist based in the UK and for several years now I've been learning about something called Open Dialogue. It's a way of working in mental health services that redresses the power imbalances embedded within the system so that we work with people more as equals and engage in a mutual journey of discovery to share the experience being had and understand together what it means. Open Dialogue is, as the name suggests, about putting dialogue, genuine, open-minded and open-hearted dialogue at the centre of all we do. And as such, the dialogical way really represents a revolution in mental health care. I've been practising it at work for about three years now, writing about it, studying it in trials and teaching it to colleagues. But the whole time I do this, one question has been gnawing away at the back of my mind. It's a question that for me seems to grow in intensity with each passing day. What would a dialogical society look like? What would a world look like where instead of relying on the hierarchies of the state and the elitism of our politics and the whims of world leaders, our system of democracy actually involved people making decisions about themselves by themselves? In other words, a true democracy in its original form where people come together to dialogue about issues that affect them and devise ways forward mutually and collaboratively rather than outsourcing the whole business of government to a largely male, almost exclusively middle class group of career politicians who however good or bad or progressive or otherwise they may be, could never be more qualified to make decisions about us than we are ourselves. Is this fantasy? Could such a thing ever happen? Well. I very recently discovered that it can happen. In fact, it is happening right now. With an escalating chaos on the global stage unfolding before our eyes, the world today is a storm. And the place I'm going to introduce you to is the very eye of that storm. Just as you need to get through the roughest, most dangerous parts of a storm to discover the calm center, so you need to pass through some of the bloodiest violence and most shocking turmoil on the planet today to arrive at a place called Rojava in northern Syria. It is a largely Kurdish region that has chosen to not side with either the pro or anti-government forces, but instead just defend themselves whenever attacked by either. The area contains a vast mix of ethnicities, especially with large numbers of refugees settling there in recent years. And together they have established a system of direct democracy that they called democratic confederalism. This consists of a series of neighborhood communes where people come together at a very local level and they're the most powerful element of the system. That's right, the power is at the bottom of the system, not at the top. The communes are the ultimate authority on all the decisions that affect their own community, from transport to business to policing to the military. Everyone is welcome to attend communal meetings and there, collaboratively, they dialogue and decide on what is best for their community as a whole. There must be a minimum of 40% women attending each commune for it to be quorate, and also there are minimum quotas for all ethnic minorities to ensure that all voices are heard. Only decisions that can't directly be made at the communal level are then passed up to regional council levels and then wider federal levels. But the power always rests with the neighbourhoods and the higher levels are answerable to them. It's a democracy based on people dialoguing with one another at a local neighbourhood level and wherever possible, asking no one to make decisions for them but themselves. Now this isn't some fly-by-night momentary arrangement. It has been meticulously planned for years by a Kurdish leader known as Abdullah Ojalan. Ojalan fell in love with the work of a philosopher named Murray Bookchin and then started writing a political treatise around these ideas in prison since his incarceration in Turkey by the Turkish authorities in 1999. Reading Ojalan's ideas the Kurds of Turkey and Syria started to organize in their neighborhoods and imagine what such a world might actually look like. Then after the Syrian war started, the cantons of Rojava formally launched what they called democratic autonomous administrations in 2012. This system of government now covers a population of nearly 5 million people and while valiantly defending their territory, fighting off IS at the one end and the Assad regime at the other, what they have done in the middle of it is to launch the single greatest experiment in direct democracy in human history. Yet, had you even heard of it before? With all the news and reporting that goes on from that region, has this ever been anywhere on the radar? No. And you know why not? 
because it represents the single biggest threat to the hierarchical system of untrammeled capitalism that has almost taken over the entire world and if left unchecked before long will destroy it too. And that's why I made this video, so that you can hear about what's really going on in the very eye of the storm we are living through today, and so you might gain just a glimpse of what true freedom might actually look like. And so now, it's over to you. Share this knowledge and build on it. There are many books about Rojava and all of these people out there, and countless hours of meetings and lectures about all of this on YouTube. Learn, share, and spread. A better world is possible. In fact, it's already started. But it's up to us to spread it.